Good evening, St. Thomas, and welcome to our evening Lenten Wednesday devotional. I hope you enjoy, and I can't wait to see you guys all again in person soon. Let us pray. O oh God, our longing, strengthen us and dwell in our hearts, that we be rooted and grounded in your love. Help us to comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth of the mercy you have shown us on the cross. Fill our hearts with your grace, that we lead lives that radiate your love to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading tonight is from the book of Ezekiel. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord your God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I shall give you, a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God the word of the Lord. So the theme of our Lenten service this week is change of heart. And so today we heard this poignant reading from Ezekiel about how God will one day restore his people, how he will give them new hearts and new spirits, how he will remove their hearts of stone and give them hearts of flesh truly capable of loving God and one another. And this is a particularly good reading for us today because a change of heart is perhaps what we all need most right now in this very trying time. We need a new way of thinking, a new way of doing some things in this time of unprecedented and rapid change. Because let's face it, things are getting hard. Every day, new things are happening, new restrictions, new things to give up, new and terrifying statistics and predictions about the future. And it is hard to know if we are doing it right or if this is all worth it. This is a new and dangerous test for us as a community, as a nation, and as a planet. And we are going to need God's help if we are all going to get through it. So maybe now is a very good time to ask God to change our hearts and to reorient us all from thinking about what we want to what the community needs. So as you probably know, I am coming to you from home tonight where I am holed up with my husband and four and five-year-old kids, which means guess what? I have been watching a lot of Disney movies lately. And both my boys are currently obsessed with watching Frozen 2, which luckily for me is actually a fairly good movie. And I should know by now, I've watched it about 10 times in the last month. But there is a song in that movie called Do the Next Right Thing. And I think it's very apt for our times. In it, the main character faces a string of mounting challenges and devastating losses. She doesn't know what the future holds, and she can't see a clear way out of her situation. But then she remembers some wise advice. When you can't see a future, all you can do is choose the next right thing. And she does. And that seems like really good advice for us this week as well. Because that is all that we can really do right now. We don't know when or how this ends. 
We don't even know what will happen tomorrow, much less next week or next month. We don't know what the future holds. So all that we can do is choose to do the next right thing. To ask God to change our hearts. To give us hearts that truly love our neighbor as ourselves. So that we can focus not on what we are losing, what we are giving up, or how scared we are, but on how many lives we can save. How many families won't have to be torn apart? How many terrifying nights in the hospital will never happen because we have made the choice to do the next right thing? To follow scientific advice, to stay home, to maintain a social distance, to care for our neighbors, and then to do the next thing, and the next, and the next until we can all come out of this together. I don't know how this ends any more than you do, but I know how the ending starts. It begins with hope and prayer, and each and every one of us choosing to use the hearts that God has given us to do the next right thing, and so we can all be safe together. Amen. Have a wonderful night, St. Thomas. I can't wait to see you again. Enjoy your ending of Holden Evening Prayer.